Hi, everybody. Nice to be here. Uh, and apologies in advance if I talk rather fast. Uh, but I foolishly given myself a lot to cover here, and so this might get a little manic at times. Um, OK, now, for the past couple of years, the Upper Hutt City Library has been experimenting with ways of inviting greater community involvement in the building of its heritage collections. Uh, Oh, it works. Uh, our primary vehicle for doing this has been the setting up of an interactive online database using New Zealand Micrographics Ret Recollect platform. Um, this is it here, and as you may be able to see, it currently holds over 20,000 digitized photos, over 400 digitized publications, and over 150 digitized manuscripts. Uh, I've spoken about Recollect at previous presentations, so I won't be going into details about it here. Uh, so, uh, although you know you could talk to the people at the, the good people at the NZMS stand if you want to know more information. Uh, suffice to say, Recollect has various features that enable users to contribute information to items, as well as picture tags and geotags. Um, users are also able to download and reuse high-res copies of these digital items, most of which, like this, are covered by a uh, Creative Commons 3.0 license. Okay, now there were two main purposes behind the impl implementation of our Recollect site. Um, the first of these was to facilitate crowdsourcing information about our collection items from the community. Um, the second was to facilitate greater community engagement with our heritage collections, um, using these items as social objects through which people might connect with one another. Um, ironically, perhaps, these kind of Web 2.0 style principles have also led us towards developing non-digital strategies uh, aimed at attaining the same objectives. Uh, the reason for this was because we initially encountered some problems with the uptake of our site that we attributed to the digital divide, namely the fact that many of our target audience were seniors in our communities who were less than comfortable with using technology of this kind. So as a way of getting around this, we started experimenting with what we thought of as analog crowdsourcing techniques. Um, one of these involved uh, printing off hundreds of A3 sheets of paper like this with themed selections of our images on them uh, from our collections. Um, these were then passed around at what we called our way, the Way We Were events. Uh, this slide is of our first one, although we've had uh, a number of, held a number of these since that one. Um, we usually put on food and beverages at these events to try and create an informal social atmosphere. People are able to pause through these heritage sheets at their own pace and share memories about what they see with one another. Uh, they are also invited to write comments on the sheet itself if they wish or on post-its notes and stick it to it. Uh, hence, analog crowdsourcing. Uh, as with our Recollect website, events like these serve as a way of getting our archival collections out of the storeroom and into the community. Okay, now this year, as a further extension of these kinds of archival outreach activities, we ran what we called a pop-up museum uh, with the title Memories of Main Street. Um, as with many of our best ideas, uh, we stole this, um, or at least I should say we were strongly inspired by Auckland City Library's successful Dominion Road Stories Oral History Project, where they took over an empty shop on Dominion Road for a few days and used it as an inviting space for people to come and record their memories of that area. Uh, we too wanted to both tell and retrieve stories about an urban location by setting up a temporary space within it, within it for that purpose. In our case, we wanted to trace and capture the history of Upper Hutt's Main Street, which happens to be called Main Street, uh, by establishing a pop-up museum for four days in the local mall, which happens to be called The Mall. Uh, for various reasons, we are unable to use an empty shop with actual frontage on Main Street for this purpose. So as a way of, of still keeping a presence on the street, it's on, the, on the street itself, we created these uh, individual bespoke posters for the event. Uh, I think there were around 50 of them, uh, each of which showed what a particular location on Main Street looked like sometime in the past. These were then given to the prison occupiers of that building to put up in their windows. Uh, this created a sort of in situ exhibition of its own where people could walk down Main Street and view these periodic glimpses into the past. Uh, for instance, the spot where that church there stood up until the 1970s is now a McDonald's uh, and, the petrol and the petrol station is a cafe. Um, 
As you also notice, the po all the posters had QR codes attached, with, which meant that smart people with smartphones uh, could pull up the record of that image from Recollect and learn about it, learn about the site while literally standing in the street. Um, okay, now this is the pop-up museum itself, which despite its grandiose moniker was a pretty modest affair. We are a small institution with limited resources. Um, it simply consisted of printouts of heritage images blue tacked to the walls. Uh, with other images lying around for people to leaf through. Uh, nevertheless, this proved effective enough for our purposes, and over the four days we were open, it attracted enthusiastic crowds. Um, indeed, we, uh, as with our, the way we were events, it was very important for us to create a relaxed social space uh, where people could interact with one another, uh, so we put on tea and biscuits and provided comfy sofas. Um, indeed, we had a number of elderly visitors who were there every day we were open and just sort of hung out. Uh, in terms then of our objective of creating a space for social connection around heritage content, our pop-up museum proved quite a success. It also worked well in terms of our other objective, which was to capture and record people's memories about this area before that information was lost. And this was where digital technology came in. Um, here, for instance, is my colleague Jane with a digital recorder capturing people's stories as they reminisced about the pictures they were looking at. Uh, this information is now in the process of being transcribed for adding to our Recollect site. Uh, we're also intending to put audio extracts from these recordings up there as well. Uh, in addition to this, we had a couple of laptops on location connected to our website. This not only enabled us to search for and show people other pictures of Main Street that we hadn't included in the exhibition, it also allowed us to immediately record any information they provided us with directly onto the Recollect record itself. And doing this, of course, was also a good way of introducing people to Recollect and explaining to them how it worked. Um, Finally, we also had one of our laptops attached to a flatbed scanner so that people could bring along their own heritage images and have these scanned and added to our collections while they waited. Uh, and we got a number of very useful accessions through doing this. Um, yeah, so in the end, we got really great feedback from this event and numerous quests to do it again. We're currently looking at ways of better presenting our Main Street material online, perhaps by creating a special section on Recollect specifically devoted to Main Street. This is part of a more general drive on our part to try and develop our Recollect site from being mainly an online database into a more general local history reference space where our collection items have added value through also having been repackaged into online exhibitions, educational resource kits, etc. Uh, as a first tentative step in this direction, we've started on constructing a special World War I resources section. Um, this, of course, is an attempt to cater to the interest in this event generated by the centenary commemorations we're currently going through. Uh, as you can see on this slide, slide one of the subsections we've got here will be devoted to providing brief biographies of local Anzacs. Uh, we haven't actually got anything up there yet, but that's going to be a major focus for us in the coming months. Uh, another of the subsections, as you can see there, uh, will provide... Uh, transcribed copies of First World War letters, postcards, and diaries that we hold in our archives. Uh, and those of you who were lucky enough to be at uh, Mia Ridge's very inspiring address yesterday will appreciate how valuable this kind of online digitized content can be in providing all kinds of researchers with context about people's experiences during the war. Uh, this example here is uh, of a collection we've just completed. It's a complete set of letters home from Sapper Rupert Christie, covering the time from when this young man first began his training at Featherston Camp up until when, sadly, he was killed in France in 1918. Um, these 500 pages of correspondence were all digitized and transcribed by a small team of community volunteers uh, that we had working at the library, and they did an excellent job. Um, this was a very immersive project and perhaps not surprisingly ended up being quite an emotional experience for all of us involved. Okay, uh, Upper Hutt has a particularly strong connection with the First World War through its being the site of Transom Camp. Uh, the third section of our World War I resources pages endeavors to tell the story of how Upper Hutt was transformed by the war through presenting an online exhibition of images from our collection. Uh, these images are all linked to their location on this 1915 Trentham maneuver map, uh, uh, Trentham Camp maneuver map of the area. Uh, by clicking on one of the orange location pins there, you can view photographs and read text about what was happening at that spot at that time. Uh, 
One of the main aims here, obviously, was to try and increase people's local, local people's awareness of the history of their everyday surroundings. Uh, for instance, clicking on the spot marked C takes you through to this site here. Uh, this is near the center of town, uh, and it was where, during the First World War, New Zealand's remount, remount depot was kept. Uh, this was where all the horses in the country that had been purchased to serve with the military overseas were initially brought for processing. Um, nowadays, this is the site of the local pack and save. Uh, and here's another example that I don't have time to talk about, but um, it's a spot on the Hutt River where soldiers used to go for bathing parade. Um, okay, now one of our aims in creating World War I resources section like this was to try and develop something that might also be of use to local schools as a teaching tool. Uh, as such, it became part of a pilot program run by the library in collaboration with a local school, Maidstone Intermediate. Um, this pilot program was called World War 100 Quest, and it took the form of a series of engaging curriculum-aligned curriculum challenges for students that involved learning about the First World War. Uh, these challenges were arranged in the form of a bingo card so that kids could opt to do four in a row or three in a diagonal or complete the whole set. Uh, tasks included things like finding out about a family member involved in the war, researching a technology used at the time, that sort of thing. Uh, several of these tasks specifically entailed using our recollect resources, such as creating a slideshow about the remount depot or using the 1915 map of Upper Hutt uh, to compare or contrast a uh, particular Upper Hutt location then and now. Um, the quest also sought to incorporate Digital New Zealand's delightful play cards against the library app, which I don't know if you're familiar with. Uh, this allows you to construct a deck of cards using two search terms on paper's past, uh, in this case, uh, Transom and Gallipoli. Um, to assist kids in undertaking these challenges, a special page of books and online resources to do with the war was set up on the library catalog. Uh, that's a handout we gave to schools to explain to students how to use it and what they could find through, you know, online. Uh, and this slide here is of me visiting Maidstone Intermediate and showing the students the kind of resources that uh, we had available on Recollect. Um, we got a very good buy-in from the school on this project, which ran over last term. Uh, we're currently going through the evaluation forms teachers filled in uh, to find out what worked and what didn't. Uh, and the plan is to roll out the quest again next year for other schools. Uh, we're also working on trying to develop something similar uh, aimed at secondary students. Okay, um, the projects I've discussed so far all, involved an element, all involve an element of local community collaboration. In the time remaining, I want to briefly discuss other collaborations grounded in the interconnectivity of the web. Uh, now, of course, one of our objectives in digitizing our heritage collections in the first place uh, and putting them online was to try and get them seen as widely as possible. Uh, in this regard, we've had two recent experiences where some of our digital content has sort of gone viral, um, at least in comparison to the very modest number of hits we usually get. Uh, and it's worth noting that in both these cases, it was the collaborative involvement of other websites that enabled us to achieve this. Uh, the first example is a fairly straightforward one. Uh, like many cultural institutions with online digital content, we've got an APA arrangement with Digital New Zealand, yay. Uh, whose federated search capability greatly increases opportunities for the discovery of our material. Uh, now, as part of their ongoing efforts to increase the visibility of their contributors' collections, uh, Digital New Zealand have recently taken things a step further by entering into a relationship with the Colt International Heritage Photography website, Retronaut. And we were fortunate enough to be a beneficiary of this new arrangement when Retronaut recently curated a set of our images from the 1960s of young people dancing. Um, this selection was put together around the theme that, hey, e even back in the hip 1960s, uh, teenagers on the dance floor could be endearingly awkward. Uh, Retronaut's set of pictures was in turn put upon Mashable, the big news aggregator website with which they have a content sharing arrangement. Uh, within a few days, these images had been shared over two and a half thousand times on social media like Facebook and Twitter. As a consequence of this collaborative chain, then, these decades-old Upper Hutt images have now been widely viewed around the world. Uh, while there hasn't been much of a flow and effect to our own website, we've nevertheless been thrilled by the enormous exposure it's given our collections. Um, 
Now, the story of our other experience of going viral this year is somewhat more involved. Um, it starts here with this Google Analytics page for our Recollect website. Um, as you can see, our visitor stats are trundling along, trundling along there at a pretty modest rate, when all of a sudden, right there in the middle of June, they dart upwards to like six times the numbers we usually get. Uh, we've dubbed this the too good spike, uh, partly because we knew the results were too good to be true in terms of any sustainable increase, uh, but mainly because uh, they have to do with this man. Uh, uh, those of you uh, New Zealanders of certain age will, of course, recognize Selwyn Toogood, a well-known broadcaster of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Now, Selwyn Toogood was also a proud Upper Huttian, uh, who in 1984 promoted, uh, fronted a promotional video for the region, which we've got available on Recollect. Um, it was this video that our recent influx of visitors had all been coming to see. Obviously, it appeals a lot, its appeal lies in the way it provides an entertainingly nostalgic time capsule view of Upper Hutt, of what Upper Hutt was like during the decade of big hair, jazzercise, and Commodore computers. Um, however, the video itself isn't a crucial part of our story here, uh, since we'd already had it up online for like nine months and without many, any, anybody paying much attention to it. Um, the reason everybody started noticing it all of a sudden was because it had been linked to this by this site, a Facebook page called Old Upper Hut. Now, Old Upper Hut had been set up a couple months previously by two Lower Hut-based women. Um, its content consisted almost entirely of photographs that had been taken either from our Recollect site or from the Alexander Turnbull. Now, it is sort of hypocritical of me, uh, given that we have a very staunch open access uh, policy, uh, but I'll own to the fact that I originally felt a little miffed about this site, uh, you know, like these people were somehow stealing our stuff. Um, but what was really pissing me off, of course, was that they were having so much more success with it. Uh, <laughs> in terms of attracting visitors to their site and people posting comments and interacting with others, they were far outstripping the kinds of numbers we were getting on Recollect. Um, there are obvious reasons for this, of course. By being on Facebook, they could hook into a vast network of people already familiar with the basic interface, uh, who didn't even have to make a special effort to visit the site, but could keep up with it from the comfort of their own Facebook page. Um, still, given how much hard work and thought we've been putting into trying to grow our own online community, it all seemed, well, rather in fear that it should come so easily to others. In the end, though, common sense prevailed, and we saw that this was basically a good thing in terms of getting our collections out there. So we set up with this meeting with the woman involved, uh, running the old Upper Hut site, and we said, well done, you're doing a good job, uh, and we proposed this collaborative arrangement whereby we'd help them out with content by alerting them to new material and other stuff that we hadn't digitized, uh, that we hadn't made available yet. In return, they, we asked that they help us identify information that people had posted on their site about items in our collections uh, and facilitate us transferring that to Recollect so that we can ensure that it was preserved for the future. Uh, they were more than happy with this proposal and what followed turned out to be a mutually beneficial and supportive relationship. So uh, yeah, we end up feeling pretty fle pleased with ourselves about this. Uh, by choosing to accommodate rather than compete with Facebook, we seem to have found the best of both worlds. On the one hand, we could benefit from its enormous popular appeal, without on the other hand having to put up with what, from our perspective, were its less appealing aspects, which I don't have time to elaborate on here. Um, on a personal level, I was also pleased because I knew I had this conference paper coming up and I thought, okay, here's a nice little success story to talk about. Uh, unfortunately, uh, at the beginning of this month, um, this entire arrangement was suddenly derailed uh, for reasons too complicated to go into here. Old Harper Hut uh, decided to close down their site with one week's notice. Um, well, not exactly a train wreck, I just wanted to use that image. Uh, this was a bit of a disaster in that apart from whatever information we'd so far managed to recover for Recollect, every comment that had ever been posted on Old Upper Hut had now vanished into the ether. Um, if the story up to this point had shown the advantages of using a third-party social media platform maintained by an independent community group for local heritage purposes, then this brought home the disadvantages. Uh, given that there still seemed a clear demand for a specifically dedicated local history Facebook page, Upper Hut Library made the very hurried decision to set up one of its own. And this has just gone up uh, just a couple weeks back. Um, now, 
while this might initially seem like this is just doubling up on our Recollect site, one of the things that seemed to come across to us from this episode was how Web 2.0 enabled heritage databases like Recollect and social media heritage sites like Old Opera at Facebook build and serve communities in different ways. Uh, they therefore shouldn't be seen as simply alternatives to one another, but rather as different tools with different strengths that can be used together as part of the same heritage community engagement project. That at least is the idea we'll be experimenting with over the next few months. Okay, thank you for your time. Absolutely brilliant. I wish um, that I didn't have to start slowly sneaking up the stairs. Because <laughs> yeah. I wanted to hear more, actually, and uh, I could hear you were hurrying up yes, towards the end. Yes, yes, I'm sure there are loads of people who'd like questions. Could I ask somebody on that side, perhaps you over there, could you grab the mic just behind on the stand, and would you mind being the mic runner? Thank you. Do we have any questions? And please do use the mics. Over there in the corner, if we could have the mic up there, please. Anybody else want to be the second person to ask a question on this side? Just um, to get the mic there in time. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, I just wondered, um, did you track the visits that were coming in through the QR codes? And if so, what? Um, how many visits did you? That's uh, no, an easy question. Yes, no, we didn't. Uh, um, and I'm not, I hate to confess my ignorance, but I'm not quite sure if we could track how um, how they came in via that. So I'm not actually sure how much uptake uh, that got. It seemed like a good idea. We we're keen to experiment with it. Um, those of you who happened to yesterday saw uh, the talk about augmented reality uh, will see that what they did in Nelson was a much fancier version of that, uh, and it's something that we'd like to try out too. But um, yes, we, we don't know what response there was for that at all. Uh, we have time for one more question. Anybody? Oh, yeah, hold on. <laughs> okay, well, two questions, sir. If we could start over here, and if you could be really brief, please, thank okay. you. Okay, how much of the um, work that you did, what you set up, was, um, how much was Recollect, the particular use of Recollect in behind that? Like, how much did it need Recollect? How much did what? How much was was the whole thing based on the the, the functionality that Recollect provides? The, um, what based the uh, uh, the interaction, the community interaction? Um, yeah, we, we, it's it, Recollect remains. As I said, we've kind of interestingly enough had to being a local community thing was a base in the local community. We've had to find ways of not just being online, but merging our physical and our virtual spaces and. Uh, the comments on, we do get a lot of comments on posted on Recollect. One thing I didn't mention about Recollect, which is absolutely crucial, is that it also allows for a volunteer editor access. So we can give certain people access to the back end, as it were. And those people have, and there's two in particular, and they've posted thousands and thousands and thousands of items on our, on, online for us, good items. So um, that's another way that it's facilitated, you know, crowdsourcing, adding content. Um, hi, Reid. Thank you. Um, just a few quick um, answers from you about engaging with elderly in, a, in an ageing community in terms of some of this online content. Other than tea, coffee and printouts, what kind of other quick hints could you have about engaging them with uh, collections? Obvious things, but one thing is um, respect, being prepared to listen. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things that's hard to capture what they're telling you because they'll look at things and they'll go off and they'll tell you fascinating things, but they'll jump around and go on and on and on. Uh, and you just have to be accommodating of that. that that's the important thing. And, uh, and make yourself available. And I do get people popping in all the time into the library and telling me useful information. But again, one of the frustrating things for me is they tell me fascinating stuff and they think by telling it to me that it's been recorded, but it hasn't. And I have to find ways of capturing it, which is where the digital recording uh, thing was, is we're experimenting with that. Cool. Great, thank you so much.